Is it possible to go to jail for stealing 3D prints? Regardless of your thoughts on that subject, I have found that occasionally when I find an incredible free 3D print that really just makes me go, wow, well, I kind of feel like I should have paid for it. I don't make incredible prints like that or any of these, and it really amazes me how people do that and put them out there for free. Especially those prints that are not only 100% 3D printed, but they don't require any support, screws, metal dowels, and some don't even need glue. Well, I recently went back through some of my favorite prints, and I even found a few new ones. And maybe there's a few here that you've missed, or maybe you've skipped due to how complicated they look. So, get ready to be amazed by these seven 3D prints. Too good to be free, but we're really glad they are. The whole idea for this video really stemmed from this print right here. According to the page, this intricately designed nutcracker, it requires no supports, no multi-material setups, no glue for assembly, and no extras to buy. Well, at that point, I was really kind of skeptical of this print, but decided to do it anyway. There's really no setup except for making sure you're printing the right parts in the right colors. Fortunately, the individual STL parts are labeled perfectly, or just use the provided 3MF file to load each plate individually. After printing, assembly is pretty straightforward. The parts are designed to interlock tightly without the need for any adhesives. Now, one quick note if you don't have any tan filament. If you use a wood filament, kind of like I did, we'll expect some of those parts will be a little harder to get into position, and I had to do a little whittling, but I think it was worth it. And just so you know, this is a fairly complicated project, but it's really suitable for makers of all skill levels. And personally, I'd have to say this is one of the most incredible models I've ever 3D printed. And that includes a lot of the things I've paid for too. Well, do you need a snack or some gum to get you through the afternoon? Well, then you might actually need this fully functional, fully 3D printed push button gumball machine. It's a really fun project that's perfect for beginners and experienced makers alike. Now for materials, PLA works great depending on what you'll be putting in it and how long you plan to leave that. Otherwise, go for PETG or better yet, a food safe filament. The designer recommends a 0.8 millimeter nozzle for the spring, but I decided to test the whole thing is one full print on my Bamboo P1S. So I used a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, 2.0 millimeter line height, and all default settings. And that includes two walls and 15% grid infill. And it turned out perfect. Once you have all those pieces printed, well, it's just time to assemble. It's really simple and there's no glue needed for anything. Now you can start by attaching the plunger as the designer recommends, or just jump in like I did and put the spring in first. Either way, make sure that that plunger button presses in smoothly and it springs back into place. And then just drop the funnel in. It only goes one way and you're ready to attach the globe to the base by screwing it in. Now it's a snug fit, so take your time and ensure the pieces align perfectly. Now here's a tip for you. Don't overfill that globe because you can't really turn the whole base over completely without that funnel falling out of place. What I did is I found it easiest to hold the globe and the base at an angle and just sort of push them together. Oh, and don't forget, a multicolor filament like this one, it just takes the whole thing over the top. Although I'm not really sure how this filament ended up looking like Sherbert. They pronounce it Sherbert. So give it a try and let us know how yours turned out. <laughs> Well, next up is the CAR V4, and man, this is an extremely fun 3D printing project that's really perfect for everybody. This model is a really easy print. You'll need PLA filament, a layer height of 0.2 millimeter, about 20% infill for strong but lightweight parts. Assembly is pretty easy, and it only requires a dab of super glue here and there to hold some of the parts together. The comments did point out that the doors are just a smidge short from touching the front and the back, and I found that same thing here. But 
Instead of reprinting it and bumping up the slides just slightly, I just glued the front and the bottom and I think it worked out great, at least until it falls off. This car may not hold up to a kid playing with it and crashing it, but as a stylish desk toy or a fun gift idea, well, I think it's a great model. Also, if you don't quite connect with this type of vehicle, well, check out the designer's page on printables, and he has a lot of other equally incredible cars. What's your favorite car? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> Well, I'll admit it here, I've spent more than a few hours punching trees and exploring the worlds within Minecraft. And though I'm more of a casual Minecrafter, not like my son who's built mansions and more, I still think it's cool when I see a great Minecraft 3D print. Especially ones like this cozy Minecraft lantern. I was super impressed by the connectors on this print. They made everything just go together without glue and it feels really solid. The designer has a recommended bamboo light kit to make all of this work on his page and there's even an opening in the back for the cord. But well, I have to try going simple so I just dropped the whole thing down on a standard tea light and yes, it looks great. As always, check those comments and remixes for tons of different options and changes, like this little one. And remember, never dig straight down or up. Last summer, you more than likely saw this iPhone standby dock on a lot of creators' videos, if not the actual video by creator Scott Yuan himself. And this, in my opinion, is the epitome of simple design that's not only functional, but it looks really nice. There are currently 26 different print profiles on Maker World to go along with the original design, and 25 of those are for different iPhones. Unfortunately, the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra is the only Android phone for now, but with a case on my Galaxy S24 Plus, I decided to give it a try, and it was perfect. Different colors for the ejection, push button there on the top, or you could change up the whole dock. That could be great for customization for you or for gifts. And if all of that's not enough, another maker, Molly the Chaos Wrangler, made a fully parametric version that allows you to adjust any and every aspect of this design to fit your personal needs. I'll have links to both models in the description. <laughs> The code Cryptex with Mazebox is a fascinating 3D printable puzzle box, and it combines customizable code locks with an optional maze for the inside, making it both secure and entertaining, and probably very frustrating. It's an impossible puzzle. And I love puzzles. The Cryptex design allows you to personalize the code rings, giving you complete control over the whole combination. Once again, the design for this one is really well thought out and it doesn't require any supports to print. It's recommended to use a layer height of 0.2 millimeter and a 20% infill for a good balance, once again, between print quality and strength. This project includes a lot of different parts, so depending on your printer and settings, printing everything could take you some time. For an extra personalized touch, you can also try printing out different filament colors for the code rings, uh, the maze, the outer casing, anything like that to make your Cryptex truly one of a kind. If you want to take it up a notch, you can explore some of the accessories that the designer and a whole lot of others have created, like the double maze extension or the many, many different numbers, letters, and symbols for the code rings. So all those additions add even more depth and customization options to a really impressive project. This next project I've drooled over, I mean looked at a number of times a while back and I've always thought, man, that looks really complicated. Then at Christmas, my son shows up launching propellers up in the air so far that we could hardly see them. And of course, on the roof. <laughs> well, I waited until after he left to get started printing, and just like that, I had my very own high-speed propeller launcher, and top launcher too. The extras that people have made are just about as incredible as this launcher itself. Things like tools to help with the build, and tops, and all sorts of different propellers. Also, there's over 2,600 comments, nearly 5,000 likes, and 
Over 9,000 saves on Maker World alone. Well, with that many comments, there are plenty of ways that people have helped each other out with pretty much every possible problem. And don't forget to search things to see even more extras on other sites. The instructions are mostly pictures with a few words, and that did trip me up a few times. But here's a tip that I think will greatly help you out. Hold your parts exactly the way the picture shows and make sure those gears are all facing the same way. See those little chevrons the gears make? Kind of like little arrows? Yeah, those are really important. <laughs> Just trust me, it's very frustrating when you get those backwards. And how do you know? And two more quick tips. Number one, white lithium, silicone, or Teflon grease, it's an absolute must. The designer just says oil, but you're definitely going to need something. Well, except that, according to my son, anything that sprays is kind of a mess. I'm guessing that didn't go well. And tip number two, see that retaining clip, the one that screws in to hold it all together? My son and I both found that it works better without that inserted. Basically, sometimes there's too much friction when the main parts pushed together too tight, and without that clip in there, you can just ever so slightly pull it apart as needed. Once you get it all together and you get your propellers printed along with all your tops, all that's really left to do is start launching and spinning. Did one of these prints, or all of them, make you say, wow? Hopefully, you found at least one that you're planning on printing next. Even better, do you have one we might all enjoy that we didn't show here? Let us know in the comments. Awesome projects like these, they're perfect for our 3D print labs, so we can all learn, create, and amaze.